Hello, this is Stuart Knockbar with Educated Quest. With me today is a counterpart in the dot-com world, Wendy Nelson. She is the founder of My Kids College Choice, which is a merit scholarship database. Every, and it's about merit scholarships offered by the colleges. Many people who I meet as a, a college advisor want to know which schools are likely to offer merit scholarships. Merit scholarships are a great way to reduce college costs as long as you can keep them. And different schools have different rules and some make it easier to keep a merit scholarship than others. And Wendy has, has manages a massive database and massive update effort to keep students, parents, school counselors current as to what merit scholarships are available. Wendy, thank you for joining me today. Oh, thank you so much for having me on, Stuart. It's going to be a great pleasure to speak with you and your audience. Well, what led you to start the website? Ah, well, that's a, that's a great question. Um, back in 2012, when I had my oldest daughter um, as a, she would have been going into her senior year at that point, I thought I would like to blog about my experience. And I had um, a scholarship, not a scholarship, a college search template that I had shared with other parents locally and they seemed really interested in it. So I thought, well, maybe I'll throw that out on the web and you know, start blogging about my experience. So that's how my kids college choice started. Um, from there, I sort of fell into a niche of looking at merit scholarships and um, really based on my background with business analysis and project management which i tell people means i like to analyze and organize everything so um, the world of merit scholarships was first introduced to me through some um, resources i found online that had full ride and full tuition merit scholarships listed but I was very frustrated with what I was finding because it was either really hard to sort through uh, or not complete or the links were out of date and it just screamed spreadsheet. This needs to be in a spreadsheet. So that was my first um, effort with merit scholarships was just to take all those full tuition and full ride scholarships offered by colleges and organize them in a spreadsheet. And I offer, offered that and I still do on my kids collegechoice.com as uh, a download that, that they can purchase. And from there, I decided after doing that for, for at least a year, I thought, you know, there are a lot of great scholarships out there that colleges offer that aren't full tuition and full ride. You know, they're the, it's such a small percentage of students that are going to get those full tuition and full ride scholarships. There are great opportunities that they can find for half tuition or, you know, something close to that. So my goal was to create a database of all the merit scholarships offered by all the colleges in the U.S. Um, and make that searchable. So that's really where we are today. It's um, available on the sister site called meritscholarshiplist.com and it's a subscription model so people can subscribe for a month if they just need to to look quick or if they have a student who's younger they might want to subscribe for a year or three months and so that's that's the model we follow now for is there a merit scholarship for like any kind of student or do you have to be exclusively a four point plus 1500 plus sat person to get enough merit aid no, you actually don't have to be a top student. So I've done a lot of analysis on the data and, you know, a, a 3.0 student can get some pretty decent money. Um, test scores as well. You can get down to even below 1000 on the SAT and still get good money. Of course, uh, for fall of 2021, we're starting to see schools move away from using the ACT, SAT, scores in their merit scholarship calculations since since we're going to more of a test optional model for most schools so um so it's more exclusively about the gpa 
Um, I usually say, yeah, 3.0 and higher can get you decent merit money. Sometimes you can get some below 3.0 as well, though. Do you find that some are automatic consideration? You apply to the school and you're automatically considered, and others require some kind of application, an essay, an interview? Yes, absolutely. In fact, the way that I distinguish on the site is automatic means you're absolutely guaranteed that scholarship based on meeting the criteria that's stated. So those are, um, I would say, the smaller piece. So let's say we're probably at about 25% automatic scholarships and then about 75% competitive scholarships. Now that could also mean the ones that, like you said, you're considered for, but you're not guaranteed. And that, that competitive scholarship pool ranges from, from something like that, where every applicant is considered for a scholarship all the way to, we want you to fill out this application. We're going to have an interview. You're going to um, participate in some kind of event for a scholarship day, you know, it really, it really ranges. Do you get um, feedback from students and parents about the different kinds of scholarships? And what is, in a general way, in terms of what many people say, what do they say about merit scholarships in general? Mm. Well, you know, a lot of the feedback is, is around those automatic scholarships, because we, we, I refer to them as kind of the cream of the crop because you know you're guaranteed walking in that you're going to get that scholarship. And that's what I hear from a lot of families as well, that they're really looking for those automatic scholarship opportunities where they can look at when they have their, say, five to 10 schools they've applied to, they can look at the numbers and know I'm going to get this much money from this school. I don't have to wait until that school sends me an aid package to know uh, what they're going to provide. In an ideal world, do you, would you see more, more schools going that direction as opposed to having a competition where you have to write something or you have to do an interview or you have to make something? I think so. I mean, you know, you can make uh, arguments either way, but a lot of the automatic scholarships are really the, the, the school's opportunity to um, discount their tuition to, to a level that, that they will be competitive with, say, that student's um, in-state state school. Um, but yet there's still a place for those scholarship competitions um, where a lot of schools have these programs, like maybe they're called Rogers Scholars or some other kind of scholars. And it's a very competitive scholarship competition. And then those students, once they are selected, they come to campus as a cohort and they get, get, get you know, the, those tend to be like the full tuition or full ride scholarships. And then they also include stipends and things like that, providing a really exclusive opportunity for the students who can win that scholarship. Do you offer information on, uh, to help students who want to apply for those? Like what kind of Like if, if people have to write an essay or if people have to do an interview, do you have resources, point them to resources that oh. can help them? Yes, yeah, so um, I have some online trainings I do um, on a, a pretty regular basis where we go through, I call it the Merit Scholarship Deep Dive, and we go through like, you know, how, what are some of the, the things you need to know? Here are some essay sources to look at. Here's, you know, some tips on how to uh, win scholarships or how to look for the right types of scholarships based on on your what what would be that student's merits but um, but we don't directly you know I'm, I'm usually referring them to other sources that are out there because there are so many great sources. Should um, students and parents be open to certain considerations if they need merit aid in other words should they go to, let's say they, they're looking at state schools, like in New Jersey, where I live, Penn, I li and Pennsylvania, the neighboring state, the state universities have fairly high tuition and fees. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, you're in Illinois, the University of Illinois does too. Mm -hmm. um, should, should students who live in these states be open, let's say they want to go to a state school, be open to one in a less familiar state that might offer them an award? Yes, definitely. So in general, I tell people that, um, that really you need to be open to considering pretty much any school. You know, you can't be um, locked into specific name brand type schools if you want to get good merit scholarships. So, um, you know, sometimes people don't even know what schools don't offer merit scholarships at all. So that's a list of about 35 schools that I keep um, in my in my materials. And um, additionally, I think educating people about some of the things that are out there, like we have the Midwest Student Exchange Program, where some of the out of state schools will discount that out of state tuition for students from from other states in that area. Uh, that's a really big thing. Um, but what I try to educate people on is, is putting the financial aspect of college first and creating a large list of colleges that meet your financial needs and then kind of whittling those down from there to, to those schools that are the right fit for the student, both financially, academically, and socially. So um, it's really, I call it the upside down college search process because it's like, let's turn this process on, on its head. And instead of um, your student falling in love with schools that you're not sure if you can afford at all, you, you kind of educate yourself on that financial aspect first so that you feel more comfortable about the list of schools that they are creating to apply to. Have you found since you started the site that between you and your clients who've been very happy, that jointly you found some hidden gems out there, some schools that they look and feel and they read like a brand name school, but, you know, but they're not a brand name school, but people say, you know, wow, if I go here, I'm going to get everything I get at this brand name school, but I'm going to pay less. Mm -hmm. uh, have you guys, have you and your, have you and your customers uncovered such hidden gems? <laughs> yeah, I think there are some of those. Um, I suppose you want me to, to give some examples. Please, I'd like that. Okay, okay. Well, the most recent one, which and and I had been looking at this one a lot based on on the scholarships that they were offering, but um, University of Nebraska Lincoln. Um, I just did a post. I just put it up on my site yesterday about a family where, where the daughter was a national merit finalist. And she, went, once she found University of Nebraska, it was like, okay, this is the school. And she got a full tuition um, scholarship for being a national merit finalist. So that one I think is, is one that, that is often overlooked. Um, University of Miami, Miami of Ohio. That's another great school that has terrific automatic merit scholarships. Um, they have for fall of 2021 dropped the ACT or SAT requirement attached to those. So it's all just based on GPA, but they are very generous for out of state students. Any private colleges that you often get that often get talked about? Um, yeah, there are quite a few of those. I'm struggling to think of one off the top of my head that, that um, falls into that bucket. I know Stonehill in, I think that, is that Massachusetts? Yeah, that's outside um, Boston. Yeah, that one is big on, on merit aid, has, has a lot of merit aid to offer. Um, that comes up fairly often. Um, I'll think of some others. I just can't can't think right off the top of my head. Ha, have you ever gotten thank you notes from the colleges? From the colleges? No, I got, <laughs> I did get, I haven't gotten thank you notes, but I did get contacted. It was pretty close. Um, a college contacted me because somebody who had used my 
my data had said, well, I heard that you get this, this, and this with the scholarship. And, and when they asked them, well, how did you, where'd you hear that? They, they told them about my site. So then they contacted me and, you know, it was, it was a case where once the, the school, once I pasted in, here's, here's what we're showing people. And they said, oh, okay, that's great. You know, it, but it's, it was just like, they weren't sure if I was on the, on the same page. And really I'm taking um, their information and um, directly from the schools to show families on, in my data, what that school offers. So, so yeah, we were all good. You must have like a vast library of schools to keep up. I do. It's uh, 14 or 1500 schools that I track. So it's not every college in the country, but we, we definitely use like one resource I use is the, um, the Forbes ranking list to make sure all of their ranked schools are in my database. I, also the money, money best colleges ranking is in there. Um, just trying to keep it so it's a little more manageable because I don't really want to track, you know, 3000 schools, but, but uh, 14, 1500 is still, still a lot of work to keep up with. That, and, and, and do they change their policies annually? I guess now with the test yes. scores not being required, they, they will, but in yes. the past, were they changing them manually? A lot were, and the funny thing is that schools aren't on like a, a specific timeline for making those updates to their scholarship policies. So you're always kind of guessing, when am I going to see the next year? So, you know, this year is is a little different. So right now, um, I've seen more schools starting to publish their fall 2021 um, scholarship information within like the last month. But if we go back into uh, August, a lot of schools, probably 75% of schools had not updated their information yet because they were waiting to see what was going to happen. But we'll have schools that are updating all fall, you know, they'll still have that 2020 info out there in some cases for longer than they need to. Do they ever update during an admission cycle, like when a school, let's say, is behind in filling their class? Um, that's a great question. I don't know if I can attribute it to them being behind in filling their class or not, but yeah, they do tend to update sometimes during the admission cycle. Now, how do you um, reach out to acquire um, students uh, I'm assuming juniors, seniors, transfer students, and their parents. How do you, how do you do your customer acquisition? Yeah, that's a great question too. Um, so a lot of it comes through Facebook. I have two Facebook groups that are very active. Um, one's uh, one's dedicated to merit scholarships, called the Merit Scholarship Deep Dive, and then one is the Upside Down College Search um, Facebook group, it, and. I think a lot of uh, parents find me that way, but you know, it's, it's amazing that still word of mouth is probably the strongest way that I get new customers because I have independent consultants uh, who are telling their clients or telling other consultants. I have families, you know, telling their friends and, and neighbors. And, and so it's that, that is definitely the most helpful to me. So I don't, I don't do a lot of, of outside advertising. And what is your price um, for a student or parent? So when we're talking database access um, for, to see all of those merit scholarships across all the, the 14, 1500 schools, um, there are three membership options. So you can go for a year, a year is $99 to subscribe to the database. And that's unlimited use within that time frame. Otherwise we have a three month option for 40 or if you wanna just go month to month for as long as you need it, it is $15 a month. I would think most people would choose a year at least yes. so they can learn about a college and then so they could actually apply and then maybe, and then choose a school. Right. That is the most popular option. And we try to catch those students when they're juniors. I do 
Um, like I, I mentioned, I do a lot of um, online trainings on a regular basis, and I tend to get the parents of either sophomores or juniors primarily who are looking for that type of information about how to make college more affordable, how to use merit scholarships in, in doing that. We, like, we always seem to hear, I, I was in a dot-com world um, uh, before, before, you always seem to hear that kids pick up computers faster than uh, adults do. Is that really true when you're teaching them? <laughs> it seems to be. It really does. I mean, it's just there's some, some aptitude there that, that the kids have for that type of thing that, that you know, we, we just don't, I guess maybe because we didn't grow up with it you know, and start it early enough, just like, a, just like learning a language. Because of the importance of the site to so many people, do you find, and, and because you have the Facebook presence, do you find you get a lot of financial aid questions too? Um, a fair amount. So, you know, I, I steer people toward um, other resources to, to look at that um, need-based aid side of it. But but I make it pretty clear in my trainings and my um, and on my site that that I'm my niche is is really the merit scholarship piece and really for what I call families who are caught in the middle, meaning that they don't have the money sitting around to pay for four years of college at full price, but yet they're not going to qualify for any significant need-based aid. One of the things that I've come to learn about merit aid from doing school visits, and parents find this out when sometimes too late when they get the award letters, is that the merit aid was used to fill a need. Do you get that question often? Yeah, I'm probably not often enough because I think parents um, don't really understand the um, the. Uh, this, this scholarship displacement idea that schools are, are basically taking away some of your, your need-based aid when you're getting those merit scholarships because that's less that they have to um, give you, you know, from the need-based aid category. Do you, do you find that there are schools out there that the award, there are awards that are stackable? Yes. Yes, definitely stackable, um, you know, and, and even with the need-based aids, a lot of um, schools are broadcasting, hey, we're not going to take away any of your merit aid. And then there are also um, eh, a fair number of schools that will allow you to, to take several of their own merit-based scholarships and stack them on top of each other. One thing I, I should make clear is stackable means that you might get more than one award. Yeah. They, the, the awards might exceed what your need is, and you might get them for different reasons. You might be someone with excellent grades, but you might also be a talented musician who could be in their orchestra. So you could get a, a music award and get an academic award. Or if you're an athlete, you might get a partial scholarship and you might get an academic award. Um, there's at least one school in New Jersey that I know about, Ryder University, that actually packages aid to athletes that way. Uh, yes. Or let's say you have a recruited um, ba basketball player or baseball player, and you can't give a full ride to everyone on the team. You give a partial ac athletic award, and if they qualify academically, you give them an academic award. In some cases, those combined awards end up being larger than a D1 athletic scholarship mm -hmm. at some schools. They don't, they cover the tuition and fee part. They don't cover the room and board part, but they end up being larger. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, depending on the divisions and all, and all of that and whether they're fully funded. But yeah, I see a lot of families going for, for both those partial academic, partial athletic scholarships and then whatever merit aid they can get from the school as well. Do people um, often mix athletic aid and merit aid together? Do you, have you run into that? Do colleges? No, no, st students and parents, have they often like tried to mix athletic aid and, and assume that that's merit aid? Um, I don't, 
I guess I don't get that question very often, and I try to. So when I'm talking about the um, different types of merit scholarships, I break them down into automatic, competitive, um, national merit or Hispanic recognition type scholarships or talent scholarships. And when I talk about talent, I make it clear that I don't consider athletic scholarships to be a talent scholarship because they have that whole other set of, of rules, regulations, and everything. You know, it's a totally different world. Yeah. And you don't want to try to be the NCAA, which has very thick no. rule books. <laughs> right. That, that's got to be very, that, that's going to take up a lot of time. That takes up a lot of time. People work there every day. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, how do people, last question, how do people find you? Um, well, um, to, if they want to subscribe, how, where, where, the, yeah. should, where, where the, should they go to find you? Well, they can go to, so if they go to meritscholarshiplist.com, that's the site where they can, can jump in directly to see the subscription options. There's also a trial, a trial search ability if they go to meritscholarshiplist.com. Uh, slash trial search, they can um, see, they can just plug in their, their GPA and test score information to see how many colleges in the database have merit scholarships listed that cover those, th those, um, that score and that GPA um, before they subscribe. So it's a little, little way to know, oh yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of scholarships in there that I might want to look at, or, oh no, maybe, you know, not so many for me. So that's helpful. Um, they can go to mykidscollegechoice.com, uh, to read all of my other information about the upside down college search uh, process in general and all of that. Um, and then, like I said, on Facebook, I've got the, the two groups plus the, the My Kids College Choice Facebook page as well. Wendy, thank you for uh, spending time with me this afternoon and walking me through the different sites and what you do. This is an invaluable resource. It's going to become even more invaluable during this admission cycle. Well, thank you, Stuart. It's been really fun to talk to you, and I hope that this will be helpful for your families. Have a good day. Thanks. You too.